Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to another session of Dental Shadowing. Today we have Dr. Torgerson who's gonna to talk to us a little bit about general dentistry as well as her experience at the Dental School of USC. So thank you so much, doctor, and you can take it away. Okay. Hi, I'm Dr. Torgerson. Uh, I went to the Herman Ostrow School of Dentistry of USC. I graduated during COVID. Uh, so I'm a relatively recent grad. <laughs> um, and hopefully I can just talk to you guys a little bit about general dentistry and kind of my journey um, getting started with dental, my undergrad experience and then my experience at USC. All right, next slide. Um, so I'm kind of, I've lived everywhere. Um, I was born and raised in Minnesota, but um, I've lived in Missouri, Massachusetts, Florida, California, um, obviously like at school, uh, I did my undergrad in Minnesota. I was a biomedical sciences major and I minored in chemistry. Uh, and then obviously I did my dental school education at USC. Uh, I love to bake, cook, hike. I live in Arizona, so there's a lot of hiking. Um, I like to, you know, do restaurants as much as I can. Um, and then like looking up really cute dogs on the internet that I wish I could have that I don't have time to have right now. Um, and one of my dreams besides dentistry has always been that I want to like go on the show Survivor. So I'm always like looking up different ways that I can potentially be on the show as well. Um, I do play the cello. I played uh, collegiate lacrosse. Uh, I grew up playing ice hockey. Uh, weird fun fact about me i'm allergic to microwave popcorn uh, but no other kind of popcorn just microwave popcorn um and i'm terrified of flying but i like to travel so it kind of makes for an interesting trip <laughs> all right so i first wanted to be an orthodontist when i you know was like introduced into like the world of dentistry um but I wanted to do it because, and I, you know, I could like lie and just be like, oh, I just really like love my smile. But genuinely, I really thought my orthodontist was really cute. And I was like 13 and I really wanted to just like hang out with him. Like, I just wanted to like be around him. So I just asked if I could shadow him and him probably like knowing that I'm 13, I really can't like shadow or, you know, it's hard to shadow an orthodontist. And so he just kind of like let me sit and look at the before and after photos uh, of patients. And I just, I fell in love with like watching people before it looked like they were told to smile and their afters looked like they wanted to smile. And I was like, oh my gosh, like they look happy. They look so happy that that's what I want to do. Um, and I was bullied as a kid. And so the thought of you know, being happy and wanting to make people happy was just really intriguing to me. So um, it, it kind of starts off a little weird, <laughs> but I can't be mad at it because it ended up like leading me into the direction of what I want to do with my life. So uh, I was really grateful for that. Uh, so ever since kind of that point, I was like, I want to do everything I, I did really was revolved around, okay, how can I add this to an application? And I don't have any family in dentistry. Uh, my parents were first generation college. Um, I watched them go to school. Um, you know, we didn't grow up with much. So, you know, watching them get their education made me kind of realize that that's, I, I wanted to, you know, grow up and go to college. And so I was like, well, what can I do to strengthen my application. So I did things like I took Spanish classes. I took six years of Spanish. Um, I did a year of sign language. Uh, I actually wanted um, hearing like speech and hearing disabilities to be a minor, but uh, sign language wasn't a part of that. And I really loved the sign language part. So I decided not to pursue it as a minor completely. Uh, I was the chemistry club president 
Uh, and I made sure that the club was very volunteer focused. Again, things that not just me, but anyone who was, you know, pre-med, pre-dent, pre-whatever could also like add these things on to their applications as well. Um, and so we did a lot of service projects, a lot of community um, outreach. Uh, I took, I retook classes uh, that brought my GP day, GPA down. So I did five years in undergrad um, and I worked full time for four of those. Um, like I said, I, I did the lacrosse team uh, for, for a year. And then I also took classes that revolved around art with my hands. And I was fortunate enough to go to a school that had ceramics hand building. We saw there's a lot of ceramics classes and things like that. And um, I thought that was a great creative outlet. And I actually think that it looked, looked good on my dental school application. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so I took a year off um, in between dental school and um, undergrad, uh, I actually took about a year and a half off total. Um, again, I don't have anyone who's in dentistry, so I didn't know that you had to apply by a certain time. So I was kind of late to the game. So taking the first year off was kind of by accident, but I'm really, really grateful for it. Um, it allowed me to save up enough money to be able to apply to uh, more schools. And I was also able to get a job uh, at a dental office. Um, and I did a lot of front office work, which, you know, in the beginning I was uh, upset about, I wanted to be in the back. I, you know, I wanted to be like, I'm like, why am I, why, I don't know, why am I learning about insurance and treatment planning and all this stuff when I could be like learning about dentistry. Uh, and it wasn't until I got into dental school, um, and started seeing patients that I realized how valuable it was to have, worked around treatment plans and was, I was able to speak to patients about not only then now like what I've learned in dental school. So I knew the dental part of it, but I also knew the admin part of it, like the, the other side of it as well. So I was able to talk to them about their treatment plan, why we do things in the order that we do them, their insurance. Uh, and I felt confident about it. And I felt like that really showed through. So uh, that would be part of my advice you know, is to get a job at a dental office if you can. Uh, and it doesn't matter what you're doing. You're going to learn something very, very valuable uh, as like part of being a dentist isn't just doing clinical work. It's knowing kind of the full realm of everything. So um, I did that. Uh, my scores are kind of like listed on there. I did take the DAT three times. The first time I thought it'd be really cool to take it without studying just to see what I needed to work on. And I don't necessarily advise that, but I didn't hate that I did it because I really didn't. And I was like, oh, I really need to like work on these. Um, and I used what they're called Chad's videos. And I just, that was the only, like, that was what, what came up and it was like 50 bucks for three months of study videos. And so that's what I did. That's what I could afford. And it was so helpful. And I always thought, when I, oh my gosh, like I want to send this guy a gift basket. He, I encourage anyone, he does help for optometry, school testing, MCAT, DAT, everything. And he's amazing. And he improved my scores tremendously. So I highly recommend doing that as well. Next slide. All right. So I originally wanted to be an orthodontist, uh, but you know, after four years, I really did like general dentistry and I started to like things like oral path, oral medicine. I thought it was so interesting. USC does an awesome job of, we have what's called problem-based learning and they take the full body and all of the systems and they do a good job of kind of teaching you how they all work together and how that can come out in the mouth and what certain systemic diseases, how they appear in the mouth. And I just thought that was so cool. Um, you know, oral care is so much more than just your mouth. And uh, I, I just thought that was awesome. Um, and I, I wanted to come out of dental school and just work in the field. Having worked in an office before, I knew that dentistry outside of school was different than dentistry inside of school. 
And so I just, before I jumped into a specialty, I wanted to make sure that I liked doing them outside of school. Uh, I thought that was really important for me. And I think that it actually looks, you know, specialty schools look and see, and I think that it, it, it doesn't hurt you being a general dentist first. If anything, it's a pot, it's something that's really positive. They know that you've seen things in real life. They know that you've been out and that you've been working. Um, and I, so I think that's a positive thing. And I, I'm not going to say I'll never specialize, uh, but right now I'm really enjoying still learning a lot about just general dentistry. So. All right, so I've worked in a couple different offices since I've graduated. Um, one of them was um, just in like a, like a nicer area, not saying that where I work now isn't a nice area, but this was just like a really kind of like high end area. So I did a lot more expensive treatment, uh, things like implants, you know, Invisalign, we had a really nice same day crown making Serac machine, um, you know, and the patient's insurance was a lot better. Um, they're called what we call like PPO plans. And so um, the payout was much nicer and you didn't have to do as much to get paid the same, if that kind of makes sense. And um, a lot of the times, like, I think like, we don't set the price. Like I don't set the price of things. It really goes by region, like where you are, like in the country. Um, and then a lot of times your insurance plan sets their prices. So um, just like a fun fact, if anyone's like, oh, my dentist is expensive. It's like, well, it might be expensive, but really it's your insurance plan <laughs> that's expensive. Or maybe it's like the area of the country that you live in that's expensive. So, um, but it was, it was nice. I got to work with my mentor, um, and you know, two other doctors and I thought I, I loved it. It, I did maybe like rely on them a little too much at first, but it, it's just coming right out of school and coming out of school, having had the last three months off of school because of COVID, you know, it felt nice to kind of have a little safety net there. Um, and so, you know, that was also awesome. And they were able to kind of back you up. If you were doing a little bit of a harder case, a little bit more challenging case, you knew that you had someone there to really kind of catch you in case you just couldn't, like, couldn't finish it. Um, so that was nice. So I was doing more challenging cases. I was, you know, kind of testing myself, uh, which was great. Um, kind of a con of working with so many different dentists is that, you know, especially being so new, um, they could look at me asking other doctors questions as kind of like, well, does she not know what she's doing because of this? And so I feel like that was also like, that was kind of a con was maybe it didn't look so great. I, I maybe didn't look as confident as I look now being a solo doctor in an office where I'm the one making decisions and like, it's kind of like what I say goes and there's no one to come in afterwards and be like, well, I actually think we should do this. Um, so again, it's, it's awesome having multiple doctors, but there are, you know, pros and cons to it. And especially coming right out of school, patients who are paying more have really high expectations. I'm not saying that people that pay less have low expectations, but just in general, you know, I, I, I felt like they had really high expectations and maybe that was because of the other doctors who had been there, who had been working for a long time. And so they knew they already had an idea of, okay, like this is the quality of work that I've got and I want to get the same quality of work. So for me, that was just a little stressful. Um, again, this is just like my personal experience. Some people thrive in this kind of environment just, so this was just kind of what I thought, but the office that I'm working at now is a little bit of like a lower income. Um, you know, we accept things like Medicaid and, you know, different like HMOs, which is a different type of insurance plan. Um, people have like emergency only um, insurance. So, you know, it's hard when you're looking at a full mouth of people that you, you know, like, man, you're like, man, I really want to help this person, but 
you know, I'm only allowed to help this one tooth because that's what they came in for. Um, so I think that's part of like the cons um, is that you like internally, most people want to become dentists and because they want to help people. And so when you see something like that, your heart kind of goes out to them because you really want to be able to help them, but you really can only focus on the one area. Um, so that's kind of tough. Um, but yeah, um, so here's just some random uh, pathology cases. Um, on the uh, left, a patient had come in, um, got into a fight and uh, a long, long time ago and had his jaw wired shut. And uh, that was just some calculus growing on the outside. So it actually came through the skin um, and there was some calculus growing around it. So I thought that was an interesting case. Um, and then a patient came in on the right, um, had some, had you know, a little cavity, I, I did the filling and then um, patient had severe sensitivity. We, you know, we took the x-ray and we, you know, saw this, it had been there for other x-rays. And she said that other doctors um, had, you know, mentioned it her whole life. Uh, and what we actually found out that it was, is people have like these bony, gross, usually like on the inside, you can feel it like with your tongue, it's called tori. Uh, but sometimes the tori can grow internally and that's what happened with this woman. And usually the, you know, you don't do anything unless it's symptomatic. So, um, in this case, we, we referred her out. Another cool case. Um, I saw something similar to this, uh, and, but, you know, I just use like a different photo. This was someone that came in and um, was, I was at the county hospital uh, at USC. You have a lot of rotations um, and you get to see some stuff similar to this. So it was cool. Uh, someone had a cyst and their wisdom tooth was kind of up below their eye. And I thought it was a really interesting case. And that's something that you go and get surgery for. And it's really intense, but fun. Uh, another case here of kind of the patient that came in and, and this one, I actually don't know, you know, like what happened. Um, but I think it was important to show something like this where a patient came in with some jaw pain and this was all we had. There was, you know, no decay, like nothing really going on. Um, you know, there's some maybe stuff going on, like in the jaw next to the, that molar, but sometimes it's okay to just say, I don't know and refer it to a specialist. And I think that's important to know. Uh, on, so I was lucky enough. So USC has, as one of their faculty has the creator of 3D printed dentures. And so on the left, you see on the top is a 3D printed denture, um, like a immediate denture or like a try-in. And I was lucky enough that I got to work with this doctor and he would let me paint gingiva. So he got like gingiva colored composite and he would let me kind of like paint gingiva on these, um, on these things. So I thought that was kind of cool. It's kind of like, you know, unheard of and not everyone got to do it, but it's technology that's out there. So I think it's, I think it's awesome kind of like where dentistry is going as far as that goes. Um, person on the right just got there you know, came in with absolutely nothing, hadn't had teeth for a long time. And then you can see at the bottom, you know, he's really happy with his new set of dentures. So that's exciting. A uh, couple before and after. So the left tooth is on the left and the right tooth is on the right. Um, and then in the center is the, the finished product. So we didn't know, this was at one of the community outreach programs. We didn't know if this patient was going to be able to um, or was going to have to have root canals, but we ended up being able to save them without root canals and do awesome fillings for him that you can see um, in the middle that are, you know, perfectly shade matched. And he was really, really happy. So just some root canals. Um, again, I wanted to show to the two root canals on the left um, were great and they went awesome and, and whatever. And then on the right, um, 
you know, that was one of the cases, again, that I did at a community health um, outreach. And I was so upset. I had a file separate um, in the tooth and it's at the very, very bottom. You know, it was like the most, it was like the best case scenario for something that was not ideal. Um, but again, I just want to show that things do happen, uh, but this patient will be okay. Um, I think that a lot of times we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to be absolutely perfect. But I also just want to show things do happen. And even if this, like the outcome isn't ideally like what you would have wanted it to be, it doesn't mean that the tooth is gonna, you know, fail or, you know, it doesn't mean to have to get an extraction or any of it, if they do, it's not, it's not the end of the world. It really, really stinks. And it's a huge growing opportunity, but things do happen. And you just have to make the best out of like, okay, what now? Cause you can't change what happened. So what are we going to do now? And we end up doing an awesome root canal for her. And um, like I said, she's going to be great. Uh, so as far as USC goes, I had applied I technically I had applied three times to dental school. The first time I applied, I believe it eight schools and then five schools the second time. And I think again, like five, the third time. So I was working in Arizona and I had, when I was in high school, I Googled the sunniest place in the world. Cause I was so over Massachusetts being gray and cloudy. And when I lived in Minnesota, it was also gray and cloudy. Um, Missouri is also gray and cloudy a lot of the year. So I just, I just Googled the sunniest place in the world and it's in Arizona. So I was like, perfect. I'll move to Phoenix whenever I can. So when I was finally able to actually move to Phoenix, um, I was, you know, working at a dental office. So I tried to apply to schools that were like around where, you know, I was living uh, to kind of cut down on costs of like travel expenses and, you know, taking time off work, things like that. Uh, and I'll never forget my boss at the time had said, I was like, man, like I can't get into dental school. I'm freaking out, you know, like what am I gonna do? My advisors at under and during undergrad said, you are not gonna have scores good enough, you know, family members were like, you're not getting into school. Like you need to think of like a plan B because you have all these loans and you need to pay them off. Like you can't just like work at the front office, you know, like, like realistically, like you, you, you need to be able to, you know, like do something with your degree. Cause I'm, you know, they, they knew I wouldn't be happy um, where I was at long-term. And so I was like, man, I, just, I can't get into school. And my boss says, you, you should just call, you should just call. USC and just say, ask them when orientation is. And I was like, that's so silly. This was like at the end of July. I was like, that's silly. That's weird. And, but I was like, but I'll do it. Cause whatever, like, what do I have to lose now? So I called USC. I said, Hey, I'm just wondering when orientation is, uh, for, you know, the, the DDS program. And they were like, oh, like you didn't get anything in the mail? I said, no, technically I haven't been accepted yet, but I just, I want to know when orientation is so that the first day if someone doesn't show up, I can call <laughs> and get in. Like, I'm really interested in going. Uh, and they were like, oh, okay, it's on this day. And they, I mean, they, I feel like they felt like I was so weird for asking, but like, okay, thank you. Uh, and two weeks later, um, at, at my job, we had like the first Tuesday of every month, we had these like lunch and learns that the, uh, the dentist would host so that we all understood different treatment, why we do it so that anyone in his staff would be able to um, explain treatment to patients. And we were, we were doing one of those and it was like a Tuesday at lunch. And he usually separates kind of his his faith with his work. But at this point he just said, can we just pray that Brie gets into school? I just want everyone to stop and pray before we go back up and work. I just, can we just pray that Brie gets into school? I was like, oh man, yeah. Like I do this every day anyway, but yeah, for sure. Um, and I got back up and I had a missed call from the USC dental school on my phone with a voicemail that said, we need you to give us a call back as soon as we can. We'd like to offer you something. 
they just said something. I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, can I go call them back? Cause I think I just got into dental school. They're like, no way. And I called back and I was just bawling. And he was like, we want you to come. Can you come in 10 days? And I was like, oh my gosh, yes. So I had to like quit my job and pack up and move to LA in a week. Um, Cause school was starting like that Monday. And it was the most wild experience, but it was, it was, it was awesome. Um, and I love USC. Um, I'm, I'm sure you've been reading on the screen. There's so much to do and see and experience in LA. Um, you know, it's, you almost have to try not to experience other cultures. You know, there's so many people from so many different places uh, and you really like learn about where other people came from, which I thought was really cool. Uh, USC has a huge name and uh, they're, and I, I always thought it was kind of like a joke, but when I graduated, when I was starting to graduate, I realized it's so true. People know that USC dentists are, have a lot of clinical experience. We have a ton of, um, like experience units or we call them EUs or like credits. We have to, have, you know, do a ton of them and so many different categories. USC is one of the only schools in the nation that it's actually one of the requirements to place implants um, in order to graduate um, and restore them as well. Uh, there's so many different specialty programs, a ton of community outreach opportunities. Um, and it was, it was awesome. I thought the problem-based learning was amazing. It really, it really worked for the type of student that I am. Uh, I, like I said, I loved learning about the whole body and kind of how everything works together, but it really is like an individual based learning. Like they basically give you the tools and you have to go home and like use them type of thing. Um, which is people, some people don't like that. They want to be told, read these chapters, do these things. Um, and I often wrong with being one or the other. I love that PPL gave me the opportunity to then have more time in lab and, you know, like work with my hands. Um, but you know, like I said, some people just want to be told exactly what chapters to read and things like that. And USC just isn't like that. You basically like write a paper, like a research paper, uh, once or twice a week, and then like you discuss it with your classmates and with a faculty member. Um, again, it helped me with problem solving and critical thinking skills, um, but it's not for everyone, for sure. Uh, like I said, I love that they had so many clinical outreach programs. I was a part of, you know, basically like the community, community health selective. I was one of like the core members of that team. And so I was very blessed to be able to go out help people who are underserved, really work in the communities. And I truly felt like, and this is where, even like when I went into undergrad, like you're basically a guest in their home, you know, like you're a guest in these people's communities. They live here, they work here, they're, they've been here. Um, and so to be able to give back to someone who's basically allowing you in their home um, was just awesome to me. And I love the small ratio of faculty to students. Um, I thought it was really, really helpful. And then learning from faculty who are world renowned and who are so talented, uh, I, I just thought it was a really great experience. Um, yeah, <laughs> LA is really expensive. <laughs> and I feel like that's one of the top questions that I get or like comments that I get is that USC is, is an expensive school. Um, and, but just know that it, it doesn't, it's not just expensive for no reason. You are, I mean, you're getting, like I said, you have so many requirements. You're getting so much experience. The, some of the most experience that I know of, of people who I've talked to throughout the country. Um, and it's not just things that you have to do at school, but there's also so many opportunities that you get to do as well. So, you know, you're paying a lot of money, but it's not for nothing. Um, so, you know, there is that. You are living in like South Central LA. So kind of surrounding the school isn't the greatest. I walked to school every day for four years and I never had any issues. Um, I think it's more of like, not the area direct 
place surrounding the school, but kind of like just kind of like on the outskirts of that. Um, but there's a, there's a pro that comes to that. We always had patients. So, you know, there were tons of patients in need because we were in this little, this little pocket of LA. Um, so I thought that was awesome. But also the university, USC itself, um, one of the perks is that you have free lift rides um, within like a mile radius, I think from the school from 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. So technically you can call someone to come pick you up um, or, you know, like go, go to the app and enter in like where you're at and have them drop you off if you, if you live close to the school. Um, so that was nice. And really there's no issues on campus. And so if you were driving and community and you park on campus, I never heard of anyone having issues like walking to the parking garage or anything like that. Um, and then kind of like what I was saying about PBL, it has its pros and cons. Um, if you're not like a self-sufficient or, you know, like if you are not like a self motivator to, you know, do like the research and the studying, which isn't always easy, um, then it might be a little bit more difficult, not, not impossible. Um, but kind of like what I said, it can be really difficult to manage on your own. Um, if, if that's, if you're not like a self-starter, um, there's a lot of high expectations because you have really great faculty. So I sometimes they forget what it's like to, <laughs> to be a, a student dentist, um, but that only makes you better. It kind of stinks when you're in it, but then having been out and seeing kind of like where I'm at and where people outside being like, oh, this is a new grad. They expected me to be a lot worse than I think I was. I have a lot to learn and I'm learning every single day, but I think USC gave me the opportunity and the skills to be in a better position than I would have been somewhere else. Um, but I didn't go anywhere else. So I can't say that for sure. That's just what I think. Yep. Like I said, it's expensive, but it doesn't mean it's not worth it. Um, I totally agree. The experience alone is worth it. Um, a lot of the students don't feel a need to do a GPR or an AEGD. Uh, which is like a just like a year of a, essentially like a general practice residency uh they are amazing and that's so that's not to diss anyone doing a gpr or an aegd i just know that most students don't feel like they need to um they can feel like they they want to um usc has a lot of up-to-date technology um you know the quality of work that you're expected to do and the efficiency um, that you are able to do it at um, allows you to have a great experience. Um, and there's also these things called like an income-based um, repayment programs. So it's, they're like basically pay as you earn. So you pay 10% of what you make like gross and then sorry you, you make you you pay back 10 percent of what you make and then after 20 years you pay off like a massive interest bomb but then the like the rest gets forgiven so yeah it's manageable <laughs> uh so your first year or d1 you're in PBL two days a week. You have a class on amalgam. It's since been changed um, to something more up to date than amalgam <laughs> or like the silver fillings. Uh, and to be honest, that was about two years after my time. So I'm not exactly sure what it's called. Um, and then in the springtime, you have like a composite course and kind of the basis of prepping and filling. Uh, and then you have what's called morphology, basically like what the tooth looks like. Um, and that's taught by someone who is amazing, Dr. Pascal Monnier. Um, and people pay a lot of money to do his CE courses and to learn from him. And it was awesome being able to have him kind of like as a faculty member, knowing that there are people who like tr want to try to see him and learn from him um, like on, on their free weekends. So that was cool. Uh, you do have Thursdays off in the fall and in the spring semesters. Um, so you can go to the beach, catch up on work, practice, do your learning needs for PBL. So like those research papers, um, or whatever you want to do for, like, I didn't live next, like close to my family. So Thursdays I try to spend catching up with my family. 
um, you know, doing random things, but truthfully, I spent a lot of time at school. <laughs> I was one of those people that I was so nervous. I, I was, I was, I spent a lot of extra time at school. Um, and then in the summer you have what's called fixed pros. So like crown preps, um, and you start doing those on, you start that on Thursdays. So starting in the summer, you don't have Thursdays off anymore. Um, and then that kind of like rolls into, um, and then you're doing cleaning, like learning how to do cleanings on your classmates. Uh, you're, the second year you're still doing PBL, uh, and you're seeing cleaning patients in clinic, um, on Tuesday mornings. And then that's followed by lectures. Uh, you're still doing fixed pros, but this time it's more bridges, um, and what's called integrated restorative sciences in the spring. And that is, they kind of took everything that you've learned so far. So like fillings, crowns, bridges, inlays on it like whatever you name it any kind of restorative they would test you on that and have it be more of like a comprehensive treatment plan so it's almost like they gave you a patient and you were doing work on them um, so I thought that was very very helpful and that was brand new to our class uh, and I, I think it was amazing uh, and you also take a removable prosthetics course and that is taught by Dr. Kim um, the you know, the man who helped invent 3D printed dentures. And it's notoriously the most difficult course at USC, not just because of kind of like the concepts, but um, dentures are very, very particular. And, um, you know, he was one of the faculty that expected a lot out of you and um, really demanded excellence. Um, but again, that's something now that uh, doing dentures now for patients that I'm, I'm grateful that he was kind of hard on us. Um, you're taking treatment plan courses and implant courses as well. Your second year, third year is when you start getting into clinic, like nearly full time. Um, so sorry, can we next slide it? <laughs> yes. Um, so at this point you're doing, your PBL gets cut down to one day a week. Um, and I say day, it's really just like half day. So um, one day a week, you're seeing patients as little as two clinic periods, but really the way USC works is you can submit like a visitor request. So you can request to work at any given time, but you for sure have a chair two days a week. Um, so that's really, really nice. Um, and you start your rotations as well. And that's like technically the summer of second year. So we, you know, USC is, does a really good job of kind of like throwing you in clinic as early as possible. Um, so you're doing certain rotations. Um, this is when I think people start thinking about applying to specialty programs um, and they can start doing their externships, reaching out to, you know, different programs in schools. Um, also at this time, we're doing group treatment planning um, where we get, get, you know, get a patient and we go through a treatment plan in front of like eight specialists, uh, faculty, and a group of different students. And we kind of present this patient why we did the treatment plan, why, we, you know, what's the ideal treatment plan, what's like an alternative treatment plan. Um, and you learn a lot that way as well. Um, and you also start taking oral pathology courses. Um, in the summer of your third year, you take some, and kind of going into fourth year, by fourth year, you are, well, really by spring of your third year, you're done with PBL. Like there's no more PBL. So you are in clinic all the time as much as possible, you know, kind of besides the treatment planning, oral pathology, um, kind of like the business of dentistry type of course, courses that you're taking. Um, and then fourth year, fourth year, I felt like it was really, really rotation heavy. Um, I felt like I was rarely at school my third year or my fourth year. I was always kind of out doing different rotations, which I didn't mind. Um, I thought it was awesome. If I had a patient that I needed to do work on, I was kind of like frustrated, but um, I don't, I, I don't think that like compromised their health or compromise, compromise the quality of work that they were getting. Um, it just was, you know, me being nitpicky. Um, I think the hardest part about dental school is time management and kind of realizing that you have to mix 
like your dental life with your social life. Um, you really like when you go through something like dental school, that's really, really hard. You, it's almost impossible not to really like feel for your classmates. And it's hard not to like make connections with your classmates because they're going through the same things too. Um, so you kind of like spend nights and, you know, like really long nights in the, in the lab, you know, burning yourself with the denture torch or with the wax and, um, you know, like, you know, doing final preps, getting ready for your, you know, your practical exams and things like that. But so I think kind of combining those and really being okay with combining those was something that was helpful for me. Um, and like I said, really dedicating some study time to your PBL and your, your learning needs and things like that. You have to be calling and scheduling patients. I was constantly almost every single day, every single day going through making sure I had my patient's treatment plan ready to go all mapped out. I had like multiple calendars with like different scenarios of like, okay, if this person comes in this day, but has this, it may have been overkill, but I got done with a lot of my requirements early. Um, and it was so less stressful knowing that I was done early. I actually, my last day of school, I delivered my, my final denture. And that was the last day of school I had because COVID happened and then we weren't allowed to come to school. So I was kind of, I felt nice knowing that, okay, at least I know I'm okay. Like, you know, a lot of people across the nation were having to deal with, well, I don't have my requirements done. Like, am I going to graduate? I have to go into a lot of people had not only just residencies or specialty programs, but they had like the army. I mean, like some people are in, are in the, you know, armed forces or, you know, like Marines. Um, I know I'm forgetting a whole bunch, um, you know, but a lot of them had to dedicate and had a specific day that they had to do that. And there was this whole big question mark of, are you even gonna graduate? Um, so my thing is work hard in the beginning so that you can be stress-free later. No one wants to, you know, be wondering if they're gonna graduate on graduation day. Um, and then I think it's important to find things outside of dental school and outside of like senior classmates only. Um, I was lucky I found an awesome church um, and kind of joined like a small group. And I thought that was really helpful. Um, and I also think just like giving yourself grace. I think once I finally realized I have been a dentist for zero years, zero years have I been a dentist. I'm still a student. I'm still learning. Um, and just once I gave myself like permission to not be perfect, I felt like my life was going a lot smoother. I just felt a lot more calm, a lot more stress-free. It helped not only like my dental work, but it helped my friendships. It helps my, helped my relationships with my family. Um, I just felt like I could take a deep breath. Um, and then also knowing that you're just not going to please everyone. You can be the best, whatever, and someone's not going to like you and that's just fine. And that's, that's their prerogative and, 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 and it's okay. But I think that was the hardest part about dental school is, you know, we're all kind of big fish in a small pond and you get to dental school and you realize there's a lot of big fish. It's not just you. So, um, just being okay with that and realizing that you can learn from your classmates. They're not always an opponent. You can learn from them. They might have a skill or a technique that they learned from someone else that would be super beneficial for you. So I think that was important too. Um, my favorite part about dental school was just knowing that I had accomplished something really difficult to do. Not everyone gets to be able to do this. I mean, that's the reality is like not everyone gets into dental school. And I met someone on my first interview at USC. I met someone um, and we exchanged numbers so we could kind of keep in contact. And he never got into dental school. And I felt so, so lucky that that like that was something that I, you know, was chosen to do um, with the reality of not everyone gets to do that. So I think that was an awesome part of dental school. And also you get to help so many people. The reality is that most people come to dental school because they don't have a lot of money to go into private practice um, to get their work done. And so knowing that you're out here doing all these things for people when normally they probably wouldn't be able to get that care uh, 
I, I mean, that, that should mean a lot to people that they get to help people who wouldn't otherwise get help. Um, and then, you know, in undergrad, you're kind of learning about all these different things and all these different subjects because you're just trying to kind of fill, okay, I have to take O-chem, gen chem, physics, you know, all these different classes that you're not maybe being interested in those topics you know, you're just interested in like science and, you know, medicine and dentistry. And uh, so when you're in dental school, you're learning about things that you love. Um, and that kind of, yeah, I feel like it got me excited. I mean, you know, I wanted to like learn about these things because it was what I cared about. Um, and other people care about them too. You could totally geek out with other people and, you know, they get again, like what, what you're going through and, you know, they get excited about it too. Um, and then like I was kind of saying, like you learn a lot more than just about dentistry. Um, there was a lot of life lessons that I learned at school and I think that's truly invaluable. And that was one of my favorite parts. Uh, so some advice I have, like I said, I applied three times and I'm getting on the second time, but just never give up. Um, um, always, always try, call, call the school. I always thought I was an, I was a student ambassador for USC and I always said, call the school. If you haven't got accepted, and this is where you want to go wherever, wherever you want to go, just call the school and say, I want to, I want to go there so bad that I'm willing to call you on orientation day and say, who didn't show up, put me in coach. I feel like that kind of tells them that you're really interested, um, that you're motivated and that you're determined to get in. Um, and then when you're in school or out of school, just be involved in the community. That was something I learned so much from my community health selective. So, so much. And I cannot even imagine being not, like not having that experience. Uh, I felt like I learned, you know, three times as much doing those rotations and you know, being part of that core group than if I would have had done nothing, been involved in nothing and only done the bare minimum. Um, and don't lose sight of what matters. You know, that's, it's really easy to kind of lose sight and you know, to, you know, to, to maybe not care about certain things or think that, you know, I don't want to like give up my weekends and I want to go do whatever, but what really matters is that you're learning and that you're helping people. Um, and that not saying that you can't take a weekend off. I'm a huge advocate for, you know, work hard, play hard. You deserve and really should have a life outside of dental school, but just don't, just don't forget about why you're there. Um, and the impact that you could have on someone's life. Um, and then this is the last one. So for final boards there, you know, you take three boards exams um, for the final one is like a clinical exam. I just advise people to take ADEX instead of REBS. Um, and that may, might mean nothing to you now, but just remember it when it's time to take boards, to take ADEX instead of REBS and you'll be good. And that's it. All right, cool. We have some questions for you. Um, okay. from the chat. So I'll go ahead and ask you the first question. They asked, what did you like about the USC dentistry program? And I know you touched on that a lot, but I guess yeah. what, really, what really drew you to it at, at the end? I honestly think, so like I was saying, I delivered that denture and then we weren't allowed to like, I mean, COVID was really ever present and we weren't allowed to go back to school. That was like March 14th, <laughs> remember the day. Uh, but I had spent before that two weeks in trailers in the middle of nowhere, California, like working on kids, you know, who needed care. And I really, truly feel like the like community health outreach and they do, they do community and then they do international as well. Um, and I just love that, you know, even though it costs a lot, they did a ton of giving back. And I, I, I really, really liked that part of it. Awesome. And then another question was, do you think you'll open your own private practice in the future? And they also asked about like some pros and cons right now being an associate. I know you talked about that. So just, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think eventually the goal is to own my own practice. 
Um, but for, again, for me right now, I want to make sure that I don't want to specialize. And so for me, you know, I'm just focused on learning what I, you know, learning what I don't know. Cause the reality is there's so much still that you don't know about dentistry when you graduate. Um, so a, for sure, like long-term goal is to kind of own my own place. Um, yeah, definitely. And what's nice is that dentists, from what I hear, um, usually get loans from like banks fairly easily as well. So that's really nice. Um, and then pros and cons of being associate. I feel like I'm very lucky because I, I get to kind of, I get to work on my own. Like I, I do have a, a, a boss, um, but you know, for the most part, I have like full autonomy of, you know, if I want to refer patients, what treatment plan I want to do. Um, but even if, even when I was working, like I said, with the other doctors, so many pros and cons to both, right. Being an associate with people and being an associate by yourself. So I think it's just about finding, it's going to sound so, so cliche, but just finding the good in it all. And it can be a minute by minute thing that you need to say. It can be something that you need to remind yourself every morning, every week. I mean, there might be some times where, you know, it's like before every patient, you're like, I love my job. I make a difference. I love the job. I make a difference. Um, but it's true. You know, there's, there's pros and cons to everything. And there's pros and cons to being a business owner as well. Right. There's truly no one to fall back on ever. I mean, it's you. Um, so I would say, don't jump into it. I know there are some people that go right into ownership, um, but just take your time and learn. Yeah, that's what I would say. I hope that. Is right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And then another question was, do you ever get stressed at the job? If so, how do you handle it? Yes, of course I get stressed, but I get stressed for many number of reasons. Like I said, sometimes you want to help people so much, but you know that you're kind of bound by things, you know, by a lot of times you're bound by insurance and like what you can do. And, you know, the population that I work with, which while I'm so like blessed to be able to work with, you know, a population that again, would really otherwise maybe go without care. It's, it's, it can be hard because, you know, if you like, what does their insurance cover? Um, so it's, it's stressful because you just want to do everything, but you can't do everything. So I think that's, and I get stressed out, like knowing that I don't know everything, <laughs> so, which is like such a bad thing to think about. But again, like, I just want to help everyone. And I just, I want everyone to get the best care. And so sometimes I get stressed out thinking that, um, I wish the best care was with me, but that's not always the case. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I just work out or I bake or what's awesome is that when you graduate, you don't have homework. I mean, I try to like read up on like, um, you know, different procedures and, you know, there's an awesome app called dental town, uh, that when you graduate, you can, you know, use your license number to like look at free CE courses, other CE courses on there. So I try to do stuff like that, but for the most part, I try to just take a walk, you know, watch a little TV, digress from the day. Um, and then, like I said, it's important to have time away from dentistry. So, yeah. And then another question was, I know you're a new dentist. However, what do you consider the most significant accomplishment of your career thus far? Oh my gosh. <laughs> The most significant accomplishments. Oof. That's really hard. Wow. Oh my gosh. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes I think getting up and going to work every day is a huge accomplishment. <laughs> Some days it's really hard, you know, but uh, and then graduating, obviously, I, for me, was a huge accomplishment. It's a, something that I wanted to do forever, you know, for almost two decades. That's what I wanted to do. So, um, but I think 
most recently I had a patient come in and I'm, you know, I'm spiritual. And so uh, I, you know, I pray every morning that I just, I see who I'm supposed to see and, you know, that I, you know, I'm able to do my best. And, um, you know, I, again, I try to just keep it separate because I want to respect other people. And, but a patient had written on her new patient paperwork, it was like, who referred you to us? And she wrote God. And I just, I don't know, like something like, I just, I kind of like laughed at first. And I always review pe people's health history with them before I get started. And I said, I don't know how I'm going to send God a thank you note. Um, but she truly was like, I just prayed and like, he like led me to here. So for me, I was like, so she's like, I have full trust in you. Cause I feel like I'm meant to be here. And I just felt like our like two prayers had like come together that like, I was meant to like help who I'm supposed to help. And she was meant to get helped by someone. And so for me, I thought that was a huge accomplishment and, um, I still work with her and she's, she's awesome. And she's so sweet. So, yeah, I don't know. I hope that. <laughs> That's amazing, actually. Um, yeah. Just some shout outs in the chat. Carol said, great job, Doc. I think mm -hmm. one of your family members, Lori, says we are proud of you. Oh, it's my mom. And then um, our last question for you is, what is your favorite procedure? Ooh, my favorite isn't necessarily what I'm the best at, but I really like implants and root canals. I think those are my favorite procedures. Root canals, it's almost like instant gratification, right? It's like you, you do the root canal and you fill it and you can take that x-ray and you're like, oh, this looks amazing. Um, but implants is cool because of you get to like use this awesome new technology uh, like on someone uh, by putting like, you know, it sounds like weird, but you're putting a screw in someone's face. And so it's very, it's just really cool, I think. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, doctor, for coming today and talking to us. We appreciate it. Um, if you want to message doctor, she had her Instagram right here. You can message her always. She's open to DMs. And then, yeah, the post-session quiz will be in our Instagram bio. Thank you so much again, doctor, for everything. Thank you so much.